And this time, I want to introduce our next speaker. He's going to speak briefly, and he's a dear friend of mine, Reg Platt. And uh, the message that he's going to give, uh, I think, is very, very important. So let me just tell you a little bit about Reg, and then I'll let him come up here and give this presentation. Reg is a man with a checkered past. Uh, after his own abortion experience in 1976 in Houston, he began a life of pain and denial, descending into alcohol and drug abuse, sexual addiction, and apostasy. Through the grace of God, he was able to look at the loss of his only child and recognize it for what it was, a sin of the worst kind. He became active in pro-life community as a parish coordinator in 2010, worked with his wife Susan volunteering for the Dallas 40 Days for Life campaigns, and together they attended a Rachel's Vineyard Retreat. Invited to participate in the first Project Joseph Day of Healing for men nine years ago, he went from a participant to a team member to facilitator to now coordinator. He's an independent pro-life speaker who addressed the USCCB Project Rachel Director Training back in 2016, the Dallas Ministry Conference and the Post-Abortion Pastoral and Professional Conference in 2017, in Mexico City in 2019 for the 30th anniversary of the Centro de Ayuda para la Mujer Latin Americana. I don't know how long I had to practice that. Uh, he is featured in an upcoming documentary called Fathers, and he shares his post-abortive experience at men's groups, seminars, student groups, and churches of all denominations. He's helped to initiate local men's healing ministries in Arkansas in 2021 and Indiana in 2022. And I know this for a fact, he will speak to anyone, anywhere, anytime about the power of God's loving forgiveness and how it has healed him and many, many men who have been uh, harmed by the scourge of abortion. So please give a warm welcome for that. because a man is not allowed to have an opinion about abortion because he has no uterus. And I'm here to tell you that I lost my only child to abortion in 1976. We weren't um, sloppy lovers. We weren't an unlucky one-night stand. We were a pair of newlyweds. My brand new wife and I found out that we were pregnant just weeks after we were married. And it was uh, quite a surprise because 
She actually had an abortion years before, back when it was illegal in Texas the first time. And she thought it had sterilized her. So we thought we couldn't have children. But that didn't bother me. I loved her, so I was quite prepared to get married and live with her anyway. So when she said, I'm pregnant, inside, I was overjoyed. I thought, this is a miracle. Thank God for it. And then she said, but I'm going to get an abortion. Inside, I was screaming, please don't do this. But outside, I said, well, it's your body, dear. You do what you want, and I'll support your decision. In other words, I told her it wasn't my problem. I took the coward's way out. So she had that abortion, and it broke my heart. But I couldn't tell anybody this. You see, I was surrounded by people who thought that abortion was a good thing. And I thought, this just must be a, a temporary thing. Because at the time, I also believed that abortion was a good thing. Um, that summer, I tried to kill myself. I had slipped into depression and into anger and to grief, and I didn't know why because I had lied to myself. I fooled my head and said, nothing wrong with it. But you can't fool your heart. The heart and the soul knows the truth. And so since my brain was fooled, I thought, I thought that all that depression and anger and grief and suffering meant I was just crazy. And so, I tried to take my life, because it got so bad. But Jesus had a different plan for me. I was there in the bathroom, the hot water tap was running. I had that razor blade right over my wrist. And I looked in the mirror, and I hated that pitiful creature looking back at me. And again, I didn't know why. And I looked deep into my own eyes, of all things, and I saw the Spirit of Christ looking back at me, which, if I'm lucky, I can see in everybody else's eyes now. I didn't see it anywhere then, until that moment. when he said, I've got other plans for you. Well, I had agreed to the abortion because I figured that my marriage wouldn't survive if I challenged it. I knew that uh, my wife, being a strong feminist that she was, that our marriage would just dissolve. So I went along with it. 
And of course, six months later, our marriage imploded. It had started by us picking at each other and then turned into straight out fights, hate and anger filled. After that was done, I decided it was time to pick up and go someplace else. I was living in Houston at the time, but before I could get out, after we had been separated for a couple months, she came back to me and said, I need your help. I'm pregnant. So I said, sure, okay. My heart was solid by that time. And so I drove her to the same abortion clinic, sat in the same waiting room, and felt nothing. So I had two abortions under my belt now. I left her behind, and I came to Dallas. You know, a new start, a new place to be, some place where you never have to worry anymore. Because you know, you get a fresh start, you leave all your problems behind, but when you open up your suitcase, there they are. Well, I married again. Discovered that I had a very low um, sperm count. So I was effectively sterile now. Disappointed my second wife, and I couldn't, uh, couldn't impregnate her. And so she started sleeping around on me. And I turned to drugs, alcohol and sexual access, trying to fill the hole that was in my heart. And none of it did it. Because when you work hard enough to numb yourself, you'll do anything to feel something. Well, after that, I met my third, and as I call her, my real wife, Susan. And we went together to a Rachel's Vineyard, and it helped me tremendously. It helped me recognize my child, not as something that happened in the past, but as someone, someone I had lost. I prayed for guidance of the Holy Spirit, and he told me that she was a girl, and so I named her Elizabeth Dolores. Elizabeth was her mother's middle name, and Dolores because it made me sad. Rachel's vineyard helped me tremendously, but there were still things about my masculinity that were damaged. See, abortion affects a man just differently than it does a woman. As Father Donald told us, a man needs to be strong, he also needs to be proud. Proud, brave, strong, brave, and true. An abortion makes a man weak, frightened, and confused. So we found in Project Joseph, it's designed for men like me, were suffering because of an abortion in their past. 
I'm here telling you this today because with a crowd of men this large, a good percentage of you have an abortion in your past. And you're ashamed, and you're sitting on top of it and pushing it down. And I'm here to tell you, that's not what God wants for you. God wants you to come to him and say, you're sorry that you acknowledge what you've done and that you can now face him and face yourself and face other people. Project Joseph is a group of men we gather together. Everything is strictly confidential. It's only men. And if you have this in your past, you're welcome. You're not alone. The devil wants you to think that you're alone, but you're not. God wants you gathered in and given the strength to face what, what you've done. You can't undo it. But you can repent and be forgiven and receive comfort and freedom. I still carry the scar of my abortion wound. But I carry it and I show it to you freely because the shame has been taken away from me. I no longer I'm ashamed or afraid. I am no longer owned by my abortion experience. I own it. And that's why I can show it to you and help you deal with your own. Now, if you've never had an abortion issue in your past, God bless you. I hope you never do. But if you don't, you know somebody who has. One in four men have been involved one way or the other. Whether they demanded the abortion and forced it on the woman, or like me, they just didn't stand up for it or were a coward. Or who fought it and lost. No matter what your involvement, God loves you and does not want that you, you carry that burden anymore. So, I can tell you, you can pick up a copy of my book. It's not as thick as some of the other ones, but it's a lot cheaper, so that kind of makes up for it. This is uh, an article I wrote that appeared in The Word Among Us back in 2019. It tells my story, and it gives you information of where to contact. With Project Joseph, we're reaching a hand out to you. We want to help. I'm, I'm glad I'm part of it. I wish there had been something like it when I was younger. So thank you for your time. God bless you all. And as Dave graciously said, I will talk to anyone anywhere, anytime about this. So if you think this is something that might be useful for your men's group at your parish, find me, talk to me. I'll be glad to help. Thank you and God bless you.